in um, 2017, mm-hmm. that is the 19th Party Congress. Right. I had gone to uh, China just days after, mm-hmm. and I met. Uh, obviously, I can't name them. Or some uh, Communist yeah. Party cadres, very well informed. Right. Mm. Uh, who told me? Who, to, who said that? You know, uh, Xi Jinping has overreached himself, mm-hmm. and um, uh, we cannot, according to them, China cannot take on the U.S. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are getting isolated. Right. Look at what friends we have. This person, mm. North Korea and Pakistan. So now you can have Russia. Russia is good. Yes. But uh, certainly, uh, that is what has happened. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. You are on the Gist, our daily evening program. I'm Nitin Gokhale. And with me on the Gist this evening is uh, Jaydev Ranade, familiar face on Strat News Global, uh, China specialist, uh, someone who watches uh, developments in China related to China very closely. And uh, he's someone we are going to uh, ask uh, this question about what's going on in China internally and uh, what is uh, Xi Jinping's game plan with his ministers disappearing out of public view uh, and, uh, of course, uh, so much of uncertainty in uh, the polity as well as uh, in the Chinese economy. So welcome to this program, Mr. Anade. Thank you. And um, again, you know, the inevitable question, what's happening in China? Is there any clarity possible at all? Well, I think uh, clarity is uh, difficult in such an opaque society and a system of government. But uh, certainly it's very, very unusual what we are seeing. The rate at which uh, changes are taking place in China, the way the ministers are going. Mm. And uh, I would sort of say that uh, uh, we need to really uh, look at things a bit deeper than just look at the number of ministers or others who have disappeared. Uh, the main issue is what does it mean? Sure. What does it signal? Right. Uh, Correct. Chinese politics. Yes. So, uh, I mean, okay, uh, that will uh, certainly be the uh, main theme of this discussion. But uh, a prominent minister, uh, also, you know, someone who uh, has been in the public view as a defense minister, Li Shangfu, is uh, not seen in the public for the last uh, couple of months or maybe from early August. Uh, and uh, before that, of course, we know that the foreign minister, Ching Gang, has just disappeared without a trace. And then uh, there are these other reports about purges in the rocket force uh, and uh, various other uh, organizations. So, uh, when you connect all these dots, you think, is it uh, because these ministers were uh, collectively posing a challenge to Xi Jinping or uh, that he wants to show that he is cracking down on corruption and incompetence? What is it? I, from the information that is available and from what I can see, I don't see these two as uh, having disappeared because they are posing a challenge to Xi Jinping. Sure, okay. Uh, because, and I'll explain why. Mm. But the rocket force mm. could be because of the project. Right. Um, the rocket force is a favored force. They have always had a lot of money. Mm-hmm. They've always been very secretive. And uh, with the build-up of the missile uh, inventory by China, obviously they have even more right. funding. Mm. So they, that could be a possibility. I read a report that the PNA's Discipline Inspection Commission, which is their anti-corruption outfit, oh. has started investigations for the period 2015 to 2018, which is when Li Shangfu was deputy commander of the rocket force. So maybe he is involved because mm-hmm. they talked about, uh, uh, you know, uh, some uh, errors or Misappropriation. uh, misappropriations oh. uh, in the bidding process. Oh. But having said that. Uh, why I keep Li Shangfu and uh, Chin Kang separate is uh, that both mm-hmm. were appointed by Xi Jinping. Exactly. Not only that, mm-hmm. since you are talking about Li Shang, mm-hmm. Li Shangfu and Xi Jinping. Li Shangfu is also a prince link, by the way. Right. And uh, his father and Xi Jinping's father served together. Mm-hmm. And Xi Jinping has, in a way, you can say, uh, moved him up. In fact, it was uh, Xi Jinping's father who brought uh, Li Shangfu mm-hmm. into the mainstream from being just a um, uh, technical... Uh, Engineer uh, uh, yeah. soldier, perhaps. Exactly. Yeah. Brought him into the mainstream. And then, of course, he's been promoted. He was brought into the 19th Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party mm-hmm. by Xi Jinping. Mm-hmm. And, of course, now uh, main defense minister and state counselor. 
So to my mind, it is, he's a Xi Jinping uh, man, if I could call him that, a Xi Jinping loyalist. Uh, and I doubt very much if a person with his background would plot against Xi Jinping because his future is tied to him. Right. Similarly, if we look at Chin Kang, it is the same thing. In fact, Chin Kang is not a diplomat, right. I say. Correct. He came from the intelligence background uh, into the, and they were brought into the foreign ministry after many years. And then it was Xi Jinping mm. who brought him into the Central Committee at the last Congress in October right. last year. Mm. And in effect gave him a double promotion. Sure. He was not an alternate member. He straight away entered as a full member. Then he sent him, I mean earlier he had sent him as foreign minister. Uh, uh, sorry, oh, I, ambassador uh, to ambassador to Washington. US, yes. Mm. Uh, you know, ignoring the claims of other senior trade. Mm -hmm. Then before he finished his term, he brought him back, right. appointed him as full CC member, as a foreign minister and a state councillor. Mm. Uh, Wang Yi, etc. were waiting five years before they got that. So these guys are Xi Jinping. Blue-eyed boys. Uh, Blue-eyed boys. Mm. So which raises the question, mm. if they have disappeared or whatever, uh, why? Mm. Is it that someone is... Uh, pushing back against Xi Jinping, is there a factional flight fight? Right. Which is what I tend to subscribe to. That there is, that there are groups which are unhappy with Xi Jinping, mm -hmm. and there are enough of them. Right. We can talk about that. Yes, later. but uh, they are pushing back mm -hmm. because both these are favorites. Right, and and so he caught them, got rid of them to uh, damage control. Either that, mm -hmm. or both of them are. Uh, you know, there is an effort to push them out mm -hmm. and the decision has not yet been made, which is why we don't hear it. Right. No, but the, uh, let me take you back to your own article, which you wrote for us on Strat News Global just days before the G20 summit, and where you were, uh, I think, in my view, the first one to point out that Xi Jinping is not coming to G20, not because he wants to snub India, but because he has his own problems uh, back home, which are uh, just uh, increasing by, by the day. And uh, it now seems that uh, it is all coming true. So obviously you have better uh, analysis and better insight into all this. So uh, if there's a pushback against Xi Jinping, especially because now he's a supreme leader, uh, where would this pushback come from? There are a number of groups, uh, Nitin, you are, can't and neither can one identify one particular cause. Okay. So let me just uh, yeah, run through. Give me this, yes. One is the deteriorating economic situation. Right. No hope in sight for it to improve at the moment. Okay. At least. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one. Right. Uh, so a lot of people are unemployed. Mm -hmm. uh, joblessness is very high in the rural area as well as in the urban sector. Second, private entrepreneurs, the businessmen, they've been hit very badly. Mm -hmm. So businesses have closed down. And uh, according to estimates by Chinese, mm -hmm. thousands of businesses have closed down per year. Right. So you can imagine the extent of unemployment mm -hmm. and the unhappiness among the private entrepreneurs. Mm. The figures given out by the National Statistics Bureau, which is an official arm of the government, talks about a slight improvement in the economic uh, economic sector. Mm -hmm. Of the state-owned enterprises, I not see. the private inter okay. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So I mean that imbalance remains. Mm -hmm. Third, the uh, income differential mm -hmm. in the urban sector between the top 20% and the bottom 20% is at an all-time high mm -hmm. uh, of over 60% or so 6.3% uh, uh, difference. Okay. And similarly in the rural sector, mm -hmm. it is 93 okay. So, you know, income disparities have arisen. Then there are uh, a large number of people, mm -hmm. uh, veterans as well as party members, senior one particularly, who have disapproved or Xi Jinping starting a third term or begging a bid for a third term. Mm -hmm. Many of them feel they don't want to return to the one-man rule of Mao Zedong. Right. So there are a number of factors mm -hmm. which are there. Mm -hmm. And there are a sizable number mm -hmm. of uh, Chinese Communist Party members, the younger elephants, right. who are A, unhappy with the policy on Russia. Mm -hmm. They feel that China has gone too close. Mm -hmm. And second, unhappy with the manner in which the relation with the U.S. has been handled because they feel that's, uh, you know, it could, should have been handled better and China has been isolated. That's their view. And uh, they're uh, pretty worried that, uh, you know, things may come to a stage where the United States hits China with sanctions, mm. which China will, uh, which will really hurt China. So, uh, you know, this is uh, absolutely true. In fact, that's what was going to be my next question, that 
the relationship with, with uh, between China and US has deteriorated to such an extent. And in fact, uh, I think only uh, yesterday, Blinken and uh, Wangi met in uh, Malta. So, um, in that, uh, it is very clear that the Chinese are taking a very aggressive line. Uh, so, does it again come from this fact that they are getting isolated because they are with Russia, like you already mentioned? So now they are, are they left with the, are the Chinese left only with friends like Russia, North Korea, and Pakistan? Yeah, absolutely correct. <laughs> just three. And mind you, I, I mean, I just digress a bit. Right. In um, 2017, mm -hmm. there is the 19th Party Congress. Right. I had gone to uh, China just days after. Mm -hmm. And I met, uh, obviously, I can't name them, but some uh, Communist yeah. Party cadres, very well informed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, who told me, who, to, who said that, you know, uh, Xi Jinping has overreached himself. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we cannot, according to them, China cannot take on the US. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are getting isolated. Right. Look at what friends we have, this person. Mm -hmm. North Korea and Pakistan. So <laughs> now you can have Russia. Russia is good, yes. But uh, certainly, uh, that is what has happened. But in this meeting, mm -hmm. uh, it is interesting to see the way that the Chinese laid down what they said in the final red line or the bottom red line or the first red first line. First red line on, on Taiwan. Yeah, on Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. Taiwan is non-negotiable. Right. And all that we see happening around mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. the unprecedented number of, uh, you know, uh, military aircraft, ships, etc. And the blockade. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the exercise that is going on. Right. Taiwan is number one on the list. Mm. So f for them to say that mm. uh, is basically telling the US mm. that you back off because we are not going to and we are going to take them on. And right. that I think in fact raises the threshold of um, yeah, conflict right. uh, rather than easing it. Mm -hmm. It also appeals to their domestic audience in China that Xi Jinping is not going to bow down. Uh, not going to bow down. Yeah. But... Uh, in my view, I think that's a wrong, uh, wrong uh, step to take, unless there have been some, uh, you know, uh, parts of that conversation which have not been re uh, released, right. which are more conciliatory. On, Be on between the, the U.S. and uh, in but in China, China. talking to you about your first point, right. the minister is disappearing. Yes, Wang Yi is here. Yeah, exactly. In fact, till Saturday, people were saying even he's disappeared. Yeah. So I think uh, on by Sunday, he's already reappeared. But uh, the Ch Taiwan question uh, actually troubles the world in the sense, uh, initially, I think about three months ago, we spoke about the deadline, possible deadline as 2027. Uh, going by what is happening now, is it being advanced because of the uh, uncertain domestic situation, maybe set back in the domestic economic policy, the economic uh, condition? Uh, will Xi Jinping want to take that chance to uh, try and uh, forcibly reunify Taiwan with uh, mainland? I think, um, well, it's risky to make a... Yes, focus. sure, sure. But uh, I would think, mm. or in, in my view at least, if what I said about uh, in-party, you know, factional fighting going on within the Chinese Communist Party, mm -hmm. if that increases, mm. if that is correct, and if that increases, if there is no improvement in the economic situation, mm -hmm. then Xi Jinping will increasingly be pushed with his back to the wall. Mm. And it is at that stage that he might do something. All right. Mind you, he's got his loyalists in all the key positions. Sure. But still we are seeing mm. articles appearing that are critical critical of him. Uh, till today, yeah. including in official uh, publications, mm -hmm. which are tightly controlled. Right. So there is obviously mm. uh, dissatisfaction at various levels. Sure. That, so I think that he might do it. Mm. Uh, but he is also waiting to see mm. what the US reaction will. Because if he feels or fears that the U.S. will react, then of course he might not go the full way. Right. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think the chances are that uh, he will, because he also wants to go down in history. Mm. I mean, Chinese history and things as the person who started the reunification process. It's true. So that brings me to the obvious question: What implications for India? I think um, there are a lot of impl implications for us. Mm. Um, may not be direct. Mm -hmm. In the sense that um, uh, you know, may not lead to a direct conflict, but there'll be two or three things that can happen. Right. One, we will have the U.S. and the Quad certainly getting involved. Okay. Quad minus us. So, yeah. But where does that leave us? I think we will also have to, uh, you know, choose. Choose. We mm. can't sit on the mm. fence. We'll have to look it off. Right. The second mm. is that if China does do it. 
or if China does it and gets away with it, mm. the consequences for us will be more serious because then there'll be no restraint. Right. And they will uh, try and capture, as they have said, mm. the whole of Ladakh. And mind you, Wang Yi has not relented even after all this on Ladakh. Mm. Not Wang Yi really, the Chinese. Chinese. Uh, mm. And Arunachal. Right. So we have two problems sure. uh, right there and then. Mm -hmm. I think it will encourage the Chinese more. It will, uh, you know, remove any restraints that they have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to get at the third. Mm. Of course, the economic thing that uh, I think around 60% mm. of our trade flows through those waters. Sure. So in my estimate, mm. um, we have to take a call. I think uh, uh, the time would be right for us. We uh, should uh, get involved. Yeah. Uh, in whatever actions uh, the court plans, uh, mm -hmm. we may not send our own assets in right. to fight, but certainly we have enough bases and enough agreements with the United States and others mm -hmm. for allowing them use of all these, including the Andamans. No wonder the Indian military has started uh, looking ahead and planning ahead and uh, wargaming uh, the situation uh, in Taiwan. And if China attacks Taiwan or tries to invade Taiwan, what would be options uh, that are available and what options would be asked for by the Quad partner, especially the US. I think that study has already uh, started yes. from one, uh, what uh, one knows. But uh, one final uh, thought from you. Now, uh, everywhere uh, there are there is election season uh, in the democracies, in the US next year, in India next year. Would it tempt the Chinese to up the ante uh, when... Um, decision makers, uh, executive uh, decision makers are slightly distracted with their own domestic uh, compulsions or domestic uh, uh, needs for uh, getting re-elected. Would that be the right time for the Chinese to strike? I think it would be, a, a, you know, a real temptation for the Chinese uh, because they would anticipate that the government would not be able to respond forcefully. Mm -hmm. I think they will be mistaken mm. um, uh, from what we are seeing, sure. the current deployments. Right. And what I've been seeing is the deployments, including in the Depsang area and all, are quite high. Right. Uh, from our side. And from their, and from their side. Yeah. Uh, the rate, it, they've already bid two or three airfields sure. uh, around uh, Karapkuram and those areas. Right. Mm. So, uh, they, they could try something. Right. Uh, I think it's a high risk uh, mm -hmm. thing. It doesn't mean that they will do it, mm. but it's high enough risk. Mm. So, uh, India has to be watchful on many fronts, not just uh, on its land borders, but also what happens in Taiwan. Yeah. One has to keep a close watch and how US reacts to it would be one of the things that India will have to watch out uh, for very closely. But thank you again for your thoughts and your insights. Uh, always uh, useful to know uh, how you look at it very differently than the normal narrative. So, always a pleasure to host you uh, in our discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Will. So that's uh, Jaydev Ranade telling us uh, what we should expect and what's happening inside China uh, according to his own analysis uh, of long years of observing and uh, studying China. Uh, do keep watching Strat News Global. You know where to reach us. Our social media handles are visible uh, on the screen. Uh, keep sending feedback. Uh, your comments are uh, always welcome and uh, we take your feedback very seriously. So uh, until the next time, it's goodbye.